If you were in Venice back in November 2022, you might have seen these glass barriers. They're protecting St Mark's Basilica from floods. It's a striking measure to combat the city's most pressing problem. It's sinking, and has been for years. But hold on a minute, if you've watched this channel before, you'll remember that Venice just spent decades building a $7 billion sea defence system that finally started working in 2020. Well, as this footage shows, that big expensive mega project isn't turning out to be so mega. So what's the deal here? Why does Venice still need additional methods to protect parts of the city? And if a $7 billion system isn't enough to save it, what will? People travel from all over the world to see Venice's scenic canals and architecture, but the city may not be around to visit for much longer. In the worst case scenario, experts predict it could be underwater as early as 2100, as buildings sink further into the soil and climate change causes sea levels to rise. The city gets a lovely preview of that future every so often when a high tide known as Aqua Alta sweeps in. Now, Venice has pretty much always had to deal with this type of flooding, but in recent decades it's become much more frequent and intense, and the city is paying the price. Venice, Italy is suffering its worst flooding in more than 50 years. At least two people have died. These glass walls are just the latest step in Venice's long-running battle to hold back the ocean. You see, the place is essentially floating on water. It's built on top of a lagoon, and its foundation is mostly mud. The first settlers lived in houses made of wood and clay, both fairly lightweight materials. But as things expanded, better engineering tactics were needed. To create a stronger foundation, long wooden piles were driven into the ground until they reached hard clay five to six metres down. Each pile was closely placed together, with rock packed in between, which prevented the silt from rising. From here, wooden platforms and stonework were placed on top. That worked for a time, but by the 16th and 17th centuries, the constant flow of sediment from the main rivers flowing into the lagoon had essentially turned it into a swamp. To solve that issue, engineers boldly diverted the rivers around the lagoon and straight out to sea. Just a hundred years later, the barrier islands that divide Venice Lagoon from the Adriatic Sea were reinforced with a 10 km seawall in an attempt to withstand storms. Then, following the devastation of the 1966 flood, the city installed a network of raised walkways 110 centimetres off the ground. Luckily, one startup is already innovating and in a global market that's not currently sinking. With today's video sponsor Masterworks, almost anyone can invest in high value contemporary art from icons like Picasso, Banksy, and Warhol. And you're doing it for a fraction of what billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates pay to purchase. Masterworks' team has built a massive art database, tracking records from auctions spanning decades. They purchase the art up front, store it for 3 to 10 years, and if the painting sells for a profit, you receive your share. In fact, investors have got a return from every one of Masterworks' 11 exits to date. New offerings are released regularly, but there is also a waitlist to keep them from selling out too quickly. Luckily, you can skip that waitlist right now at the link below. Now, let's get back to Venice before it sinks. What you're looking at here is the city's latest and most expensive flood defence system yet. A $7 billion mechanised barrier called Mose that promised salvation from a watery fate. After decades of controversy and planning, it finally began operating in 2020. Here's how it's supposed to work. A series of 20 metre wide metal barriers have been strategically placed around the lagoon's inlets. They sit in huge concrete casins that were prefabricated on land, then dropped into trenches on the seabed. Each of these massive concrete segments features a service tunnel that all connects back to land, allowing access for inspections. When not in use, the hollow barriers are filled with water and submerged. But when a high tide is forecast, compressed air flows into the gates, pushing the water out. This causes the gates to rotate on their hinges and rise above the surface, blocking the incoming tide from entering the lagoon. Then, when water levels lower again, the gates fill back up and drop back beneath the surface, allowing ships to pass. Over the last few years, Mose has stopped a lot of potential flooding that would have previously washed out the city. 
but it has some drawbacks. First off, construction took ages. It was designed way back in the 1980s and was supposed to start working in the 2010s, but the system didn't go online for another decade. Since then, our understanding of climate change and its expected effects has evolved massively, and the forecasted scenarios that Mose was built for are now outdated. So parts of the city still see flooding, like St Mark's Square, which becomes a rather grand lake whenever the tide goes more than 80 centimetres above its regular level. Annoyingly for businesses and historic landmarks, city officials will only raise the Mose system when the tide hits 110 centimetres, bringing in protection for about 86% of the city. If the threshold was lower, the gates would need to be closed 80 to 100 times a year, a frequency it isn't equipped to handle yet. That's why, despite a new $7 billion system, Venice still has to use glass barriers like this. They're 5 meters long, around 1.3 meters high, and stop rising tides from sweeping into famous buildings. Each one is fixed onto armored concrete that extends 2 meters underground and works alongside a series of pumps and valves that prevent backup into the drainage system. When it's not flooding, there are openings within the walls, then when the tide hits, they're sealed off. It's only supposed to be a temporary measure until something more long-term is devised, and the walls and pumps can stop up to 1.1 meters of water, something Mose isn't optimized to do yet. That's right, the $7 billion system can't keep up with the simple aquarium walls. So having waded through all this context, you're probably wondering why they don't just lower the flood threshold and raise that big expensive Mose thing more often. Well, brace yourself, because one of the big reasons they don't do that is that Mose is not cheap to operate. Every time the barriers go up, it costs over $320,000, largely going on power and teams of people. You have to send 80 people through the lagoon in order that they are just there in order to manually work on, on, on these machines in order to pump the air in there and so on. So it's not just press of the button, but 80 people going out, staying there maybe for two days because they have bad weather, weather situation, they cannot come back and so on. So this makes it so costly. To be clear, Mose isn't fully complete yet, and this cost will probably go down over time. It's technically still an experimental mode and is due to finish sometime in 2023. Eventually, it could be optimized and run with a smaller crew, allowing it to be raised more often. But that doesn't necessarily mean they'll use it more. Then remember, if you close the lagoon, there is no ships that can pass. So you don't have industrial ships, you don't have uh, passenger ships, you don't have um, uh, commercial ships like uh, the, the, um, the fishery, the fisher boats, they cannot go out anymore or cannot come in anymore. With 27% of the city's economy relying on these ships, pushing back the floods also means pushing away income from trade. The system does feature locks alongside its gates to allow some ships to pass, but it hugely impacts capacity. To make things worse, Mose isn't a permanent fix. Jorg estimates the system might be pushed to its limit by around 2050 or 2060, depending on how quickly sea levels rise and how often they need to close the gates. He believes there are better, longer-term options that the city could take, like raising everything further above sea level by pumping water into underground wells. There's geologists that were working on these kind of projects, and they showed that you can do something that you can raise Venice between 30 and 35 centimeters. Uh, 30 centimeters, just to, 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 to make this clear, in uh, when we started to measure the, the, the sea level, at the, begin, at the end of the, uh, of the 19th century, we fixed the average water level at zero. So if you can raise Venice again by 30, 35 centimeters, you basically go back into the past by 120, 130, 140 years. Raising land like this is something scientists have been considering for years. And it's been used in places like Taipei and Tokyo to mitigate sinking and store gas. But don't expect to see it in Venice anytime soon. Critics say that because the city injected so much money into the Mose system, it's the one they'll have to run with, for now at least. Though that view might of course be forced to change should the waters truly come to threaten Venice's existence. 
This beautiful city has been in a battle with the very tides that enable its success for centuries, often engineering a way around the water and finding a path forward. But in a world that's now changing faster than ever before, it's realizing that billions of dollars and glass sticking plasters simply aren't enough. The result is one of our planet's most breathtaking cultural landmarks being plunged into an increasingly desperate race for survival that it seems to be losing. This video was made possible by Masterworks. You can learn more about that at the link below. There's also the chance to dive deeper on this and the other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you're subscribed to Tomorrow's Build.